Hi, I'm John Cash. Welcome to John Cash Ministries and Revelations Church's Daily Devotion. Today I want to talk about winning the battle of temptation. When temptation knocks at your door, God wants you to win the battle. Now, how do we do this? Well, let's take a look at Scripture and see what Jesus did. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, we start in verse 1 and we're going to look at the temptation of Jesus. The Bible says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Notice here, number one, God doesn't do the tempting. The devil always does the tempting. But, and this is a big but, the Bible says he was led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, into the desert. In other words, God the Father put him into a position where the temptation was going to happen. Okay? That's important to understand because God allows temptation in our life. He doesn't tempt us. The devil does that. But he allows it. Why is he doing this with Jesus? This is a big test. This is God's way of saying that Jesus was tempted by the devil himself over and over again in a terrible situation where he was exhausted and he won the victory. He won the battle. If Jesus can do it, we can do it too. Because the term Christian means little Christ. So, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Now, when does the devil come at him? The Bible says, after fasting, this is verse 2, 40 days and 40 nights he was hungry. Now here, it's important to understand that just as he enters the desert, the devil leaves him alone. Day one, day two, the devil leaves him alone. The devil waits for an opportune time to come after us, in particular when we're weak, when we're tired. Now, he can come after us anytime he wants, but when we're weakened and tired, that's his opportunity to get us. Here, he waits the, four, uh, the full 40 days and 40 nights. Imagine that. No food for 40 days. No water for 40 days. Now, that's a miracle. You couldn't survive 40 days with no water, no liquids. But Jesus did. It was a supernatural thing. So he gets him in his weakened state, and then he goes in for the kill. Now, our weakened states usually are at the end of the day when we're tired, ornery, and mean. Am I speaking to anybody out there? And it's at the end of the day when we have the hardest time to deal with temptations. This is why we need to walk in the Spirit of God. When our minds, when our bodies are weak and tired, we need to still be listening to the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. So he comes after Jesus right at the right time for him. And the Bible says in verse 3, The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. I love this verse here because he comes to Jesus and says, If you're the Son of God. Remember in Genesis it was, Did God really say? In almost every temptation, the foundational reasoning is this. Get us to question God. When, when Satan can get us to question God, as he did with Adam and Eve, what he's trying to do with Jesus, when he does that, it weakens us if we listen to it. So, what happened with Jesus? Jesus was very hungry. So what does he do? He comes to him in his biggest weakness. He needs food. So he starts off with saying, hey, take these stones, turn them into food. You're hungry. <laughs> now, how do we respond to temptation? We respond with the word of God, quoting the word of God back to the temptation, to the sinful thought, the sinful the desire or the devil himself. In verse 4, Jesus answered, watch, it is written. In other words, here it is. This is the word of God. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So he quoted back scripture to the devil. Now, this is from Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 3. We must, if we're going to deal with temptation and win, we must quote back scripture to, to the devil. Kind of like, you know, when you see those vampire movies and you have the... the uh, priest or the pastor holding the cross. Well, if he, if he doesn't believe in the power of that cross, the devil just grabs it, right? But if he believes in it, then the devil, or I should say, the vampire can't do anything about it. In the same way, we must 
have his word hid in our hearts so that we will not sin against him. That's Psalm 119. And so, do you know the word of God? If you don't know the word of God, folks, very well, you are basically open season for the devil. But when we know the word of God, hide it in our hearts and love it and believe it, then we can fight temptation, win the battle, and live a victorious and prosperous Christian life. God bless you. Thank you for your support at John Cash Ministries and Revelations Church.